Hi again, uh, here we are to continue with the phaser tutorial. And uh, you know, in the last video, we got our, um, our character kind of showing up on the screen here. And now what I'd like to do is I'd like to get the arrow keys or the keyboard to work to control the character and have it move around the screen, right? So you know, I'm on step, um, step six, adding physics. Let's go to step seven, keyboard controls, okay? So uh, phaser gives us some helper functions that let us access the keyboard because they know in games you're gonna maybe use the arrow keys to control a character, right? So instead of us having to um, to set up you know an individual listener for left arrow, right arrow, up arrow, down arrow, we can use this um, this input keyboard create cursor keys. Right, so we can just use that, and then cursor keys is in cursors here, right? So let's borrow this line of code, and and go back to our our example, right? So let me go to the example code here, and I'm going to follow the same pattern I used before, um, where I've got the create method, and I'm just calling methods or doing simple stuff in here. You know, I could have made a method. I probably should have made one maybe for the sky, but it was pretty short. But let's add a new one. So I'm gonna say this dot, you know, create a cursor. Yeah, maybe like that, right? So we'll say this dot create cursor, right? Um, maybe we should say setup. I like to call it create, and then it kind of reminds me that it's in the create method, right? And then we'll go down here and we'll say um, create cursor right and then we'll paste this thing in here uh, you know cursors equals this dot input dot keyboard dot create cursors but we need to say who owns this variable right so I'm gonna say this owns this variable right so this class owns the variable right or an instance of this class will own a cursors variable right so that's pretty good and that doesn't do anything by itself because we have to um, say how we want to handle the cursor right so what happens when you press the keys now we, we're listening for the key presses but we need to decide like what happens when you actually press a key so let's go back to the to the tutorial code and this block right here decides what happens when you press the key and you can see it says you know cursors dot left is down cursors dot right is down so if you press the left cursor this is what's going to happen if you press the right cursor this is what's going to happen Otherwise, you know, something down here is going to happen, right? So I'm going to copy that block of code. And if you read in here, it says to place this in the update method. So let's talk about the update method for a minute. So um, every game scene has a preload that we use to load, you know, artwork before the, the scene is run. It has a create method that initializes the scene, you know, positions objects and sets initial values for everything in the scene. And every scene also has an update method. And the update method is called every frame. So a frame goes by at about 60 times a second, right? And this is how games update. So every, every short time period, they move an object, and then they refresh the screen, and then they move their objects, or they check for collisions, and they do stuff, and then they, you know, then they, you know, um, where was I? Oh yeah. So then they uh, then they update again, right? So update is called sixty times a second, and you know essentially we use it to to update the things on the screen, right? Sorry, that was a lot of great explanation, but I think you guys are getting it. So I'm going to make an update method. So this is actually kind of a special one that's built into the scene, and we're gonna and it's going to call this for us, right? So so the scene will call on update sixty times a second, right? And we can even test that. Um, you can say, you know, actually, why don't we test it this way with an error? So I'm going to paste all of the code here from the um, from the cursors, right? So here's update right there. So I just pasted all that stuff that I copied into this method. And I'm going to kind of tab it over like this. I'm actually going to reformat it. I kind of like to do the if statements like this. You know, so let me uh, give me a second here to reformat this. And uh, yeah, that's looking a lot better, right? Let's do this one 
and that. Okay, so that looks pretty good. So we're going to have a problem that's going to give me an error, can't find cursors, and can't find player, right? So if I run this in the browser here, it's it's kind of dying, right? It's, it's The game didn't run. But when I look in the console, you can see all these error messages are just flashing by so fast. So essentially what it's doing is it's giving me an error message every frame. Right, so it's calling update every frame and then generating an error. So, um, so that's what uh, that's what update does, right? We just see it; it's just going by super quick, more than one thousand, right? Um, so, how do we fix it, right? Well, remember we assigned cursors to this, and player was also assigned to this, right? So we'll have to add, you know, this in front of cursors, this in front of players. And uh, there's another cursor right there, so we'll have to, you know, we'll have to get this one right. And then I'll put uh, this in front of player, and again in front of player, and then in front of player here. And then there's a cursors here and a player right there, and then another player here. So there's pretty much we got to put a this on just about every line here. Okay, so anyway, I go back to my game, and all of a sudden, it, there's no more errors, right? So now, when I if I hit the keys, the left key or the right key, the character moves. The up and down, oh, I guess they're the up arrow works, right? Um, and I can see that my character can jump from platform to platform, right? Hey, that's not too bad, right? Let's talk about like why this works. And you'll notice the character moves to the left when I hit the left arrow, and it moves to the right when I hit the right arrow, and when I'm not hitting any arrow, it faces me, okay? Right, so why does that work, right? Um, let's take a look. So looking at the code here, you can see that um, this is true when the left arrow is down. So they've written the code here so we can kind of read it almost like English. This dot cursors dot left arrow or left is down, right? So if that's true, we're going to say player dot set velocity x to negative 60. So velocity x affects a physics body and velocity is like how much energy something has like when it's moving, right? So we're going to give it a negative 60 amount of energy on the X. So if it's a negative amount on the X, it's going to move to the left. X is horizontal. Um, negative values move to the left. Positive values move to the right. So you can see on the next line here, if you know if the left arrow is down or is not down, then else we'll look at the uh, cursors.right is down. So if the right arrow is down, we'll do the exact same thing, but we'll set the X to a velocity of a positive 160, right? So this is, is moving to the right. And then else, uh, if the player, you know, the, the player's x velocity is zero and, and we stop moving, like no motion, right? Um, this one right here is the is down for the um, for the up arrow, right? So it's like this dot cursors up is down, which sounds kind of funny, right? Up is down, right? But but uh, and the player is not touching down. So this kind of checks to see if we're touching another body. And if we are, then this is true. So if, if the arrow is down and the player is touching another body, like a, a, a static body, then like the platforms, right? Then, um, then we can do this thing right here, which is set velocity um, on the Y to negative 330. So velocity on the Y is our vertical motion. Positive numbers move us down. And you can see that we set um, gravity up here somewhere. I'm trying to look for gravity. Oh yeah, you know it was in it was in config. So when we set up the physics world, we gave gravity a positive 300. So the you know everything would fall at this rate, you know, down right because positive numbers on the y are down. And over here, when we want the player to jump. We set its velocity on the y to negative 330, and that's move it moves it up, right? But the player eventually falls down again because gravity pulls it down. So it gets a, a bump to go up, and then gravity is constantly pulling it. So when the energy runs out, it, it falls again, okay? So anyway, so that's a quick example there um, and a talk through the uh, the physics here. Um what else? I guess I guess that's pretty good for now. So anyway, so uh, thanks for watching, and I hope that that helps you out.